Hi there. Okay, so welcome to key area six specific body defenses of unit three neurobiology and immunology. And this is our second little section on immunology. Last time was non specific body defenses. This is specific body defenses. The main message behind this one is it's your immune system learning to kill one specific pathogen. Whereas before it was about blocking any foreign pathogen from entering your body and killing it. This time we're looking for a more advanced, more specific, more technical response. So again, in terms of National 5, it's pretty much the same things that I said in the last video, is you needed to know white blood cells, part of your immune system. Phagocytes, we covered that in the last video, so make sure that you've seen that. The lymphocytes, they are the ones we are going to focus on today. The idea of lymphocytes producing antibodies, and the antibodies bind to pathogens, and the antibodies are specific to one type of pathogen, hence specific immune response. So this whole video is about the white blood cells that are lymphocytes. Okay. Um, if your pathogen manage to, manages to breach the non-specific defences and enter the blood, specific defences get launched. The reason why we need specific defences is the non-specific immune system is sometimes very slow. So you can get a bacterium getting into your bloodstream and that bacterium can start multiplying and multiplying and invading a tissue. And at the same time, phagocytes might be attacking it, but they're just a bit too slow. It's just not quite enough to kill more than are multiplying. So you end up with a bacterial infection that's getting worse and worse and worse. Specific defenses can be much larger, but they do take a bit longer in order to start off. But once they have started and once they're going, they then can be pretty rapid and pretty large response. So obviously lymphocytes, they are our specific white blood cells. So they're part of the immune response, they're the specific one. Uh, they respond to specific antigens. And we'll touch on exactly what antigens mean in a wee second. Uh, there are two main types of lymphocytes that you need to know about that we're going to cover in this, and they are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So let's focus on that word antigens. Antigens are protein molecules found on the membranes of pathogens. I'm going to note here they are actually found on the membranes of all cells, but there are, you know, antigens attached to the flu virus, antigens attached to bacteria, okay? And they are specific shaped protein molecules. Sometimes these antigens can break off and float by themselves in the plasma or tissue fluid ready for a lymphocyte to detect. This is why what we find is a lot of white blood cells lurking in our lymphatic system, in the lymph uh, vessels, waiting to encounter an antigen that comes along that doesn't belong to us. Antigens are specific shape for that particular pathogen. They are essentially a, like a lock on the outside of the cell, and each lock is unique to that particular cell type. So B lymphocytes are touching two types of lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. We'll talk about B lymphocytes first. So if an antigen binds to a B lymphocyte, what that does is it activates and causes the lymphocyte to replicate multiple times, so basically to make lots more of itself. After the replication, the B lymphocyte will then produce antibodies. And it's the antibodies themselves that actually bind to the antigens, which cause the disabling of the pathogen. So the antigen antibodies bind to the antigen, and that makes the pathogen not be harmful disease anymore. Okay, so in this diagram here, what we've got is our B lymphocyte. It's just floating around in the plasma, tissue fluid, lymph fluid, and the pathogen comes along. And what it does is the B lymphocyte then locks into the antigen. And essentially, this, this is where we get into the idea of weird evolution. You have got billions of types of, maybe hundreds, hundreds of millions of types of B lymphocytes in your body, each one with a specific little key on the outside of it. And it just so happens, as the pathogen is floating around, it just happens to fit into the lock um, of the pathogen and binds to it and that activates that specific B lymphocyte. Okay, so the first stage is once it's activated, it replicates. Okay. So in terms of antibodies, what antibodies actually are, because we've not really touched on too much what they actually are, antibodies are basically little Y-shaped molecules. You can see it in the pictures as you go through that Y-shape um, and they are produced by B lymphocytes only. They are not produced by T lymphocytes, please don't get them confused. Uh, they fit specific antigens, so again, this whole thing about being specific, they fit specific anti antigens made by the pathogen. So it's a bit like your enzymes, how they are specific with their substrates. Uh, your antibodies and antigens are specific to each other. So specific antibodies, specific to specific pathogen. It's quite a hard sentence to say. <laughs> uh, so when they bind to an antigen, they will disable it, basically making the pathogen inactive and no longer able to cause any damage. 
uh, and they cause them to clump together so that phagocytes can then come in and destroy. Okay, and this is what we have happening in this diagram here. There's your B lymphocyte having made, what, about 10 antibodies there-ish. Um, and the antibodies can then float around in the plasma, the tissue fluid, the lymph, and any of that specific pathogen that they encounter, they bind to the outside of it, disabling it, stopping it from being able to bind to our cells and kill our own cells, and also causing them to clump together. You can see they're kind of sticking together, and that makes a bigger target for phagocytes to come along and engulf them and destroy them, rather than the phagocytes having to chase down each individual one. Okay, so sometimes, B lymphocytes don't do their job properly, they don't quite go right, and what that causes is allergy, which probably most of you have, or at least every one of you knows about it. So sometimes B lymphocytes can become very sensitive to certain antigens on harmless surf substances, and this causes basically an allergic reaction. And what this is, is it's actually a stimulation of the inflammation response, so that inflammatory response. Remember we talked in the last one about kind of histamine in response to allergic reactions and how that does it. You would maybe take an antihistamine if you have an allergic reaction. It's the idea of there, it causes stimulation of the inflammation response and the antibodies can cause the allergic reaction. Okay, so an example, you don't need to know this in this kind of detail. Protein antigens on peanuts can activate B cells or B lymphocytes in some people. These people will be allergic to peanuts. The activation and proliferation of basic multiplication of a large number of the B lymphocytes causing cytokine release um, what causes a large amount of cytokines to be released. And what that does is it causes a full inflammation response in the digestive system and airways essentially. And what we get is massive inflammation around the throat area in the digestive system. It might be in the area where you touched the, the peanut, if say it was on a door handle. Quite a lot of people find it's their lips and their tongue that get affected as well uh, from a peanut allergy. And it's essentially a huge release of histamine, a massive release of histamine caused by essentially this overreaction of the B cells, the specific immune response to a harmless thing, but they basically go, ah, and completely and utterly just overreact to a completely harmless antigen on peanuts. So when a cell is infected by a pathogen, it can display antigens of the infection on its own membrane, which you can kind of see in this picture here. You've got the uninfected cell on the left, which is these normal cell antigens, whereas on the right there is the infected cell. And you can see there's the infected antigens on it as well, but there's also the pathogen now inside the cell. Now that's really handy for our immune system because that leads into the next type of cell. There is a specific type of cell that can recognize an infected cell from this information here and be able to deal with that cell and prevent the further spread of disease. And that cell is the T lymphocyte. So T lymphocytes can spot the antigens on the outside of infected cells and what they do is they attach to the outside of the infected cell and release proteins that cause the cell to self-destruct. And that act is called, the self-destruction is called apoptosis or apoptosis. Now you can see it happening on the little GIF. The white thing, that is representing the T lymphocyte. It's got the little doctor's plague mask on it. And then the infected cell is the one that's just shrinking down just now. Okay, and this is good for the rest of the body because what we don't want, we don't want that infected cell to get more and more infected and then explode its infection all over everybody else. It's essentially like in the zombie films where somebody gets bitten by a zombie and another person just shoots them in the head before they go full blown zombie. And that is to prevent the spread of the infection. So apoptosis is basically just the name for programmed cell death. So cell death. So when a cell actually just kills itself. So when the proteins of the T lymphocytes diffuse into the cells, they will activate self-destruct enzymes. So basically enzymes that say to the cell, you have got to kill yourself. You have got this pathogen in you. This is Things are going wrong. Let's just quit whilst we're ahead and let's just kill ourselves now. That is basically apoptosis. Okay, so you can see from there, the proteins diffuse into the cell, the self-destruct enzymes get activated, the cell starts to break down into small isolated parts, and then phagocytes come along and scoop up the bits of the cell, again, preventing that cell from infecting its neighbours and making its neighbour cell sick as well. Now, T lymphocytes have to be able to tell the difference between uninfected healthy cells and infected cells. If they can't, they're going to start attacking your own normal body cells, and that is bad. Okay, there are only there only should be on T cells the receptors for antigens that don't appear on normal cells. 
Okay, so what you don't want, you do not want your T lymphocytes able to bind to a normal cell, self cell. Okay, and so we call this for T lymphocytes, they be, need to be able to recognize self, they need to have self recognition to be able to say, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's not me, I'm going to go and kill it. Okay, that's the job of the T lymphocytes. But sometimes this can go wrong, where they don't recognize that something is me. What that is, is that results in autoimmune diseases. So diseases where your immune system is not working because basically your immune system is trying to kill itself because it's a bit confused. So uh, in the cases of autoimmune diseases, T lymphocytes will mistakenly get activated by normal cells. So basically, they don't do what they're supposed to do. They get confused and they start thinking something is what it isn't. And they start thinking things that should that could be bad or not bad and things that aren't bad are bad. It's a hard sense to get out as well. Uh, and this basically causes your whole body's immune system to just start breaking down itself and destroying itself because it doesn't know what's what. Now, there are two examples of autoimmune disease that you have to know are autoimmune diseases. Example number one is type 1 diabetes. Okay, In type 1 diabetes, what has mostly occurred with most people with type 1 diabetes is that the T lymphocytes in their immune system has gone and attacked and destroyed the cells that produce insulin in the pancreas. They're parts of something called, well, there's beta cells and parts of the islets of Langerhan. And what's happened is the T lymphocytes, instead of recognizing, that's fine, that's just an insulin producing cell, have gone, oh my God, I have to kill that cell. And what this means is that the condition is permanent because no more ins insulin producing cells replace them because the T lymphocytes have killed them all, which is bad. Uh, the other example you need to know is rheumatoid arthritis. So it's causing pain and swelling in joints. It's generally seen in old people, but young people can have it too. Mm, it's quite common. Uh, and it's caused by T lymphocytes attacking the cells in the joints. Uh, and it can be treated using any kind of anti-inflammatory stuff because it is an inflammatory disease. Um, but it's seen as a big pain and swelling in the joints and basically really, really painful and makes it hard to the point where you struggle to walk, you struggle to get up, you struggle to just go about your daily life. There are lots of other examples of autoimmune diseases, but these are the two that you need to know for the higher human course. OK, now training the immune system. So we're moving slightly off B and T lymphocytes, but we're sort of staying on them a little bit. After you get the original infection, it would be silly if the B and T lymphocytes and you've got millions of them coursing around in your blood, then went, OK, all right, we're going to go and kill ourselves now because we're not needed. That would be really silly because your body has essentially said, I have been exposed to this infection. I might get exposed again. Now, it also doesn't make sense to keep all of the cells around because that's a lot of energy wasted. So what happens is some of the B and T lymphocytes that were made to recognize this specific infection, they become things called memory cells. And what memory cells are is essentially they are cells that remember that you've been around this infection recently. OK, and what they allow for is a much faster response if the same if infection returns, usually so fast that you don't even get symptoms. You don't even start coughing or get the rash or um, start even feeling a little bit sort of headachy or fluey. Is it, your immune system reacts so quickly that you don't even get a chance to get sick. Chicken pox, you don't get them twice. You get them once and then you can be around people who have it again because you don't get it again because your mm. body can just deal with it. And the benefit is if you don't have it as well, you don't spread it, which is good too. So what we see here on this graph, and this is a graph that you need to be familiar with the shape of, is the primary immune response is the first time you are exposed to an infection. Okay, So you can see the level of antibodies is the numbers up the side, and they go up to about 23-ish. It's not the greatest graph in the world for numbers, but about 23 over a period of 30 days it takes to get up there. OK, but the second time around that you see that same infection, it takes about 20 days, about five days shorter to go instead from about eight antibodies to 70. So a larger response and a faster response. This is what memory cells allow for. And we will look at when we look at vaccination, we'll be looking at how basically vaccination causes this pattern of immune response inside of us. The primary immune response is when you get stuck with the needle. The secondary immune response is when you're out in the wild getting exposed to the disease. Uh, the final thing that we're going to cover in this key area is the idea of HIV, which you've probably all heard of. It's the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV is a much easier thing to call it. And basically, it attacks and destroys T lymphocytes. So it is a disease that attacks the things that's supposed to attack your diseases. Um, which obviously not a very productive thing for your body to do. So with, if your body has its T lymphocytes destroyed, your body will then struggle to defend itself from any other kind of infections like 
just the common cold and flu and things is you will find it really, really hard to defend yourself against that if you've had something that's killed all your defenders, basically. Uh, and obviously, this is HIV. It is a bad disease on its own, but it's the kind of thing that when, if it progresses, it can, it can lead on to AIDS. Okay. Now, it, uh, it, HIV is actually a really fascinating virus. I looked at it a bit in university, but this is extra. But essentially, you get infected with HIV untreated, the untreated version. You get about fluy symptoms about a week later. So you feel like you've got about the flu. And then it's about 10 years later that you start showing the symptoms of um, AIDS, about of dying. Up until then, you actually, you appear largely fine. Okay, there's the, there's an odd little sort of health episode that you might have, and that's because it takes a long time for HIV to actually eliminate your whole immune system. But once it's done that, you then have AIDS, and AIDS is what kills you. Now, AIDS is not a disease in itself. You cannot catch AIDS. It is not possible to do. Okay, so the virus has depleted your immune system. AIDS is a person who has got no immune system left. Okay, and what this means is. An individual who has AIDS will eventually be overcome by a pathogen that people without AIDS could fight. So, for example, a cold or a flu might be the thing that kills a person with AIDS because they just don't have the immune system left to be able to counteract the effect of that relatively normally harmless infection. So finally, to summarise, we've looked at the two cell types. This is your summary, very brief summary of everything we've talked about in this video. So one type of lymphocyte that we have is the B lymphocyte. It produces antibodies that will disable pathogens and it can overreact to harmless substances causing allergies. The T lymphocyte is the other type of one you need to know. It binds to infected cells and causes apoptosis and it can cause autoimmune diseases when they attack uninfected cells. Okay, so that's essentially your bare bones of it. And that's essentially it for the specific immune system. The next one is vaccination where I will try and avoid uh, taking any kind of really angry opinion at anti-vaxxers. I will do my best, I promise. <laughs> See you then. Bye.